Hey everyone, welcome to the channel where we love to talk about movies. Welcome especially if you're new. If you enjoy talking about movies and staying up to speed on what's in theaters and what's worth checking out, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a review. Alright, with that, let's get into today's uh, video, which is our Movies Monthly. We're at the end of another month, the month of October 2022. And yeah, in the Movies Monthly, I do a few different sections, so kind of going over them up front so you know what's coming. I do a tier list of all the movies I saw in theaters and just kind of a brief recap of my thoughts on the films. And then the next section is all the TV and movie shows that I watched at home. And there again I speak just briefly to kind of what I've been watching and what my recommendations are. And then third, I get steelbooks, which you can see on the, the wall behind me. As I get new ones, I show the new ones that I got throughout the month. Uh, and you get to see the artwork and just you know what I've been picking up. And then lastly, the, I look ahead to the upcoming month, what am I looking forward to the most that's coming out, whether it's TV or movies. Alright, so first up we've got the movies at the theater tier list. So this is going to be all nine movies that I saw at the theater in October. And I'm just going to yeah rank them in the tiers of S, A, B+, B, C, and D. So for some clarification why there's a B and a B plus category. Uh, B plus are the movies that I can't quite put like a stamp on to say that they're great films, but I particularly enjoyed them and like much more so than a typical B film. So that's why I've got that category. But otherwise, those kind of correspond to yeah, masterpiece, great, good, fine, and bad for types of movies or categories of movies. So first up, we have Lyle Lyle Crocodile. And this was a film that I got to see in Dolby Cinema, so that was kind of the one redeeming thing about the film. But overall, this was a very hard film to watch. I I did not really enjoy it if I wasn't... At, yeah, it was one that I kind of wanted to walk out on. It wasn't, it wasn't a very good film for me. I imagine it would be entertaining for as like a family film, but to... <laughs> To, uh, yeah, me being in my mid-twenties, it, it just wasn't a film for me. So I thought that this, this was a bad film. Actually, on top of that, I think kind of the messages that the film tells, I didn't really agree with a whole lot. So I also don't know that, I, I wouldn't recommend it as a family film either. There's a lot better stuff out there than this. Next up, we have Amsterdam. I was actually looking forward to this one just based off of the cast list. It's just a star-studded cast, but... It, despite, like, tackling some somewhat, like, it's some very interesting, like, subject matter and story material, and it's it's stuff that you think should be important and should make for a good movie, it just was kind of meh at the end of the day, and it, it goes in the, the C category for me. It was fine, it, it just didn't really do much as a film, in my opinion. So that one goes in the C category. Next up, we have Halloween Ends. And this is where we kind of go, I, I bounce between having a fairly objective and a fairly subjective list. I think it kind of has to be both, but based off of how much fun I had in this film and how much it examines the characters, I think I put this in the C category initially just because I'm like, I don't know that I can say this is a good film, but I was actually entertained and, well, I don't know. I think I, think I ended up giving this a C plus and... I don't want to do like a plus for every single category, but this was this was a fine film that was a lot more entertaining than it had any right to be, I think. But it's still not a movie that I would necessarily recommend. Up next we have Tar. This is one that I was looking forward to and hoping it would be really good, and I thought it was great. It's it's definitely an A-tier movie. I think Kate Blanchett knocked the role out of the park. I think she's a shot definitely of getting nominated, although uh, you know, for her acting, but I know that that list keeps getting filled up with other other uh, actresses, so we'll see, but I think she certainly has a, sh a, a shot, and I really liked just the, the subject matter of the film focusing on music and, you know, an orchestra and musicians, that's, that's right up my alley for the, the, you know, sort of stuff that I'm interested in. Next up we have Ticket to Paradise. This was, I think I originally gave this one a B, but there again, I kind of go back and forth. I think the movie was entertaining, and so if I was rating it subjectively, I would definitely put it in the B category for how much fun I had. 
but it's really only that way because of the actors uh, or of the, the the leads in the film. We've got Julia Roberts and George Clooney, who just have a lot of charisma and they're a lot of fun to watch. But the movie as a whole was, I think, just kind of fine. It didn't do a whole lot. Um, yeah, so it was. I'm gonna actually, yeah, put that one in the fine category. The I don't know. The I don't know. Well, okay. I'm I'm gonna go back. I I'm gonna make this some more subjective ranking because I think that's what matters at the end of the day. I don't have to kind of think what is what's generally good and and whatnot. I'm this is gonna be you know something that at least for the lower categories. If I'm entertained, it gets a B. That's that's what it's it's gonna be. Uh, I am a little bit more. I take objectivity a little bit more into account if I'm going into the A and S tier. But for these lower ones, it's very much what is my emotion coming out of the film. If I want to leave the film, it goes into the D category, which was the case for Lyle Lyle Crocodile. If I'm fairly disinterested by the and kind of bored by the end of the film, then it's a fine. And if I was entertained, I'm going to give it a B. So that's that's where we're at. And yeah, Ticket of Paradise and Halloween ends, while they weren't like necessarily objectively good movies, I was entertained and I enjoyed myself throughout it. Next up, we have Black Adam. This one, I don't know, but this movie's been kind of in the works for a while, and it finally came out. And I had my expectations kind of checked at the door. I didn't have super high expectations, but it still kind of fell, fell below the ones that I had. I thought there were good elements in the film, but it just feels very much like rinse and repeat sort of superhero film. And it didn't seem to do a whole lot of new the there were a couple characters that I really liked, but we didn't get to see a whole lot of them. I would have loved like uh, an individual film on some of those characters, but I I found the the film fairly unengaging overall. I thought the villain was very straightforward, and yeah. So this one, I was I really wasn't all that entertained. There were a couple entertaining moments, but overall it was it was pretty middle of the road and mad for me. Uh, next up we have Pray for the Devil. Here again, I'm not huge on horror films, so this is my subjective ranking, and this didn't do enough for me to think of it as other than a fine movie. Uh, I think it has some some interesting like thoughts that it puts forth uh, that you can reflect on. But and like I don't know, if you're into horror, you might like it. There's definitely jump scares and things like that. But I need a bit more than just a horror movie to be horror. I need I need good characters that I can connect with, and this just didn't quite do it for me. Next up, we have Till. This was this was a really good film. I absolutely love this film. I thought that the the story was very interesting. It's not one that I was familiar with, and I really liked how the it's it's a story being told from the point of view of the mother of the victim, and that makes it just so powerful. The film, I don't other than maybe having like a little bit of a slow pace to begin, but it gets it gets out of it's very very much like the first maybe 20 minutes after that i thought the pacing was great i can't really knock this film for anything and i do think it's a masterpiece uh, i highly recommend it i think everyone should go see it and just the the acting by the the main character i apologize her name for, slips my mind but i think she'll definitely get nominated for an acting award come award season and i think she she like she just knocked it out of the park so Lastly, we have Call Jane, and this one is, this, I thought, I had higher hopes for this film, so it came in below where I thought it would, especially with kind of the subject matter that it's tackling. I was expecting it to be more in the A category, but it did, it did a lot of good things, and I was, I was entertained, I appreciated, you know, learning something. It's, it's, again, not a story that I was familiar with, but I'm happy to be familiar with now. And I think the main thing that kept it from being higher was I just didn't quite feel the connection I was looking for to the characters. But good acting overall, and uh, yeah, solid, solid film. So that is, that's my tier ranking of all the movies that I saw in October. If you have your own list, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. You know, or if you just have, you know, a favorite movie or two, if you don't want to give a whole list by all means uh yeah i love love hearing about what other people are, are watching and you know whatever your subjective list is i think 
I yeah, it, depending on the month, I kind of bounce between subjectivity and objectivity on these. But I think movies are very subjective at the end of the day, and you know. But you know, if if you if you have a more objective approach, there's nothing wrong with that too. So. All right. Up next, we have for this movies monthly, we have the all the stuff that I watched at home, and there's actually quite a bit that wrapped up this month. I think there are only like three movies. But I was in the middle of a bunch of shows last month, and we got several of them wrapped up, and I also watched a few movies. So going through these, uh, it will be pretty quick. Some of these I watched for the first time. Some of them were rewatches. Game Night is a film that I've seen before. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great film. Uh, one of the best comedies. Maybe my favorite comedy, uh, but it's it's definitely up there, and one I would, I would think about. Like it's in the running for one of my favorite comedies. Absolutely love that film. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. That's hopefully all I need to say. <laughs> Don't really want to say too much more on it. But uh, Rules of Engagement, I kind of cycle through sitcoms and rewatching them. So I've seen this show several times now, but just wrapped up my latest uh, watch through of the whole series. And I think this is a, a great show. I recommend it. It's, you know, maybe not for everybody, but I like the characters. I definitely relate a lot to Jeff and... Yeah, find him kind of the most entertaining, but all, I think all the characters are good, and it's uh, another show that, yeah, definitely recommend. She-Hulk finished up this month, and I thought it was, this was a good show. I, I was entertained, especially in the second half of the season. It's, you know, it's not, I mean, I think it's lighthearted. It was, it was entertaining for me, kind of funny here and there. I think it could have maybe been more funny, given that it was trying to be a comedy, and I know that's a, a critique I hear of the show. But I enjoyed it. I really liked some of the stuff that worked its way into the end of the season. I'm not going to get into spoilers, but the, the last couple episodes I actually really liked. Mainly because of... Yeah, well, well I won't go into spoilers. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. It's, I think it's about average for what Marvel's been putting out lately, which is kind of B-level material. But I wasn't bored by it. I, I did enjoy most of the episodes, and I yeah really like the main character. I think she's a lot of fun. Next up, we have Rings of Power. This I had so high expectations for. The Lord of the Rings is my favorite movie of all time, uh, specifically Return of the King if I have to pick one, but I treat the whole trilogy as a movie. And while they spent a lot of money on this show, and technically it's very, very, very good, like the visuals, the music, the sound, great, the story needed a lot more work in my opinion, and it's just, the story is just kind of fine. Uh, but overall, I think it's, it's a good show. It's one that I was entertained by, but it's certainly not great or a masterpiece like I was hoping it might be. So that one gets good. Uh, next up, we have The Goonies. This is one that I hadn't seen before, and I uh, just got around to watching it. I think I've had it on 4K Blu-ray for a while, but I thought it was fine. It wasn't a bad film, but the child acting in it was just okay. Some of them were a little bit better than others, but some of them weren't very good at all. Again, that's not to say I could do any better, but just got to call it as it is. And yeah, it was not all that entertaining of a film, in my opinion. Gravity, I'm trying to remember. Uh, so I just, I saw this for the first time this month as well. Uh, I watched it in 3D at home, and the 3D was pretty good. I'm trying to remember how, like, it's it's at least a good, I'm trying to remember if it was a great. I feel like if I have to think about it, it means that it wasn't necessarily great. But, I don't know, I think Sandra Bullock did a, a really good job, and I think, I think it's a great film in 3D. If you're not watching this in 3D, then it's not. But given that I watched it in that format, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and give it a great. Uh, I think it's yeah, really good film. The 3D was particularly put to good use and shot in a way that you know not a lot of films are. So Next up, we have House of the Dragon. I was... This was a show I was looking forward to. Game of Thrones is my favorite TV show, so... I, but for this one, I kept my expectations low enough. I was just kind of hopeful we'd get something kind of on the level of Game of Thrones. And in my opinion, this is a better season one than Game of Thrones had for a season one. And I think this is an absolute masterpiece. I, yeah, absolutely love the show. I think it was like three episodes in. And not to say it, it took three episodes to get good, but that's when it really hit me. Like, I miss this feeling of, just being so in awe at how good a show is, and it's been a while since I've gotten that 
um, just because it's been a while since Game of Thrones. So, Next up, we have Sleepy Hollow. I've seen this once before years ago, but uh, I was re-watching it this month, and it's, it's fine. I wasn't all that entertained. It's a little cheesy, and... I don't know. I was I was thinking it was a better film than it ended up coming across, but maybe that's also because I already kind of knew how it ended based off uh, like how the mystery uh, ended. So knowing that, it wasn't a whole lot of entertaining outside of that, in my opinion. How to Train Your Dragon Two. This is one I've I've seen before. Saw in theaters. This is you know the second film and my favorite animated trilogy of all time, and. I think the first one is definitely a masterpiece, and the trilogy as a whole is a masterpiece. But I'm trying to think if the, no, this yeah. I mean, for like an animated film, this is this is a masterpiece. It doesn't get much better than this. Like the music's really good, the characters are great, and the story's great. So that's that's the one that I think is a must see. It's not quite as good as the first one. I think the first one in the series is the best, but. And then last up, we have Nightmare Before Christmas. This is one that I feel like I probably saw growing up, but I never, I don't remember having seen it before. And I uh, watched it in 3D because I got the 3D Blu-ray, and it was fine. I can see why a lot of people absolutely love it, but I don't personally absolutely love it. It's not quite up my alley, and yeah, I don't know. It's It was fine. I get why people like it, but uh I'm not going to be itching to watch it, certainly not every year, I, and uh, or that sort of a thing. But yeah, big list of, of stuff that I watched at home this month. If you've been watching movies or shows, even if you're rewatching them, I love I love hearing recommendations. Uh, you know, I might not I might not get around to everyone's recommendations, but if you, I, I do try to you know put things on my list, and if they are on my radar, that's I just yeah I love talking about movies, and the only way you can you know kind of get new stuff on your list is by talking about it. So definitely share what you've been watching if you if you really like it. And, you know, I'm, I'm always interested to hear what people are watching. So that is, that's what I watched at home this month. All right, so next up we've got the Steelbook section. So these are going to be all the Steelbooks that I picked up this month. Uh, at this point in time, I pretty much exclusively... I mean, I might make an exception here and there, but like the physical media that I buy is all steelbook format. I love being able to hang them as artwork on the wall. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to share with you what I picked up this month uh, you know, on steelbook. So, got some pretty cool ones. We've got, first up, we got Braveheart. I ordered this off of, I got a little bit of glare, off of Amazon, I believe it was. But uh, this came with a 4K Blu ray. Not necessarily my most favorite film, but it's got some. Got some cool artwork and uh, yeah, one that one that I thought was worth picking up. Next up, we have The Godfather. This is not one that I've actually I actually have not seen this one. So it's been on my list, and then I saw that it was going to get released in 4K and on Steelbook, and so I've been waiting to watch it until now. So that's the first one they actually released all three uh, this month. So I absolutely love the artwork on all these. I love that they're they just look like a painting. And, yeah, I've got some quotes, which I'm sure make sense if you've seen the movie, which I have not yet. But these are definitely on my list to watch, which we'll probably see come up in a, you know, what have I been watching at home in the future. So I love all of the, those covers. And then I got Screen. This is the one from earlier this year that released. It was on sale again, I think, on Amazon. So I, I gave this movie an A, so I, I did really like the movie. And then... Artwork is fine, so I uh, figured it was worth picking up the, you know, just get the physical copy, and it's it's a nice enough steelbook. And this one is Nope. This uh, this one was just kind of interesting. It's not like, like, if you've seen the film, you know what the cover is, and it, but it's an image they show, like, right away. So I think it was, it was a good artwork for, for this movie. If you don't know what it is, though, it, it looks just kind of random, uh, which is kind of nice. I don't know. I like things like that. And then lastly, this is I got this uh, just yesterday. This is Top Gun Maverick. Uh, you know, this I gave this movie an S. I've been super excited for the physical release of this, and yeah, I thought they they did a pretty good job with the, the Steelbook here. So those are those are all the films that I picked up on on Steelbook this last month. Again, if you you know if you've got any uh, recommendations for cool stuff that's out there, stuff that's got good artwork, I'm always uh, all ears for that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, hopefully you'll, you'll see these go up on the wall. Uh, we'll take some down that have been up from previous months, and these will go up and replace them. So 
should have a slightly different background now for for the month of November. But yeah. All right, so next up in the Movies Monthly, or to yeah, conclude things off, uh, we look ahead to the upcoming month, which is November 2022 in this case. And uh, we just, yeah, I, I look ahead and see what am I most looking forward to. And sometimes that's shows, sometimes that's movies, sometimes it's a bit of both. There's certainly some things wrapping up this coming month that I'm looking forward to, but as far as like new stuff kicking off, I'm not aware of any TV shows right now, but maybe some just aren't on my radar. I know... I should look up once the next season of Succession comes out. I, I'll be surprised if it's this month, but maybe it is. But that's the only show that comes to mind that I know is anywhere on the near horizon that's immediately at the top of my list. But So we got a bunch of movies. There's Armageddon Time, Wakanda Forever, The Menu, Strange World, and She Said. Though I've seen trailers for some of those. I've actively not watched trailers for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, because Marvel has been giving too much away in their marketing lately where after Doctor Strange and Thor I'm just like I don't want to watch any trailers for these things so I'm going in as blind as possible to that movie and I am actually really excited but the others I don't know that I've seen a trailer for Strange World but it's a Disney animated film and they've been knocking it out of the park consistently for like the last decade at least uh, especially in relation to Pixar which has been kind of more hit and miss. But uh, the other three, though, I've seen trailers for, and I'm, I'm excited. I think they've got, you know, good casts and interesting stories from what the trailers make them look like. So let me know, though, in the comments below if you, there's anything in particular that you're looking forward to in November, uh, especially if it's not on my list. Uh, it's possible that either it didn't stand out or I just haven't heard of it. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear if I'm missing something here. All right, so that does it for this Movies Monthly. Uh, again, October 2022 has come and gone. So if you enjoyed this review, be sure to smash, or well, it's not really a review, but if you've enjoyed this video and this content, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. Uh, definitely share it if you've got other people that you know that love talking about movies. And yeah, just share your, your general thoughts down below if you had on any of the sections. I love you know hearing what other people are watching, what their recommendations are, everything like that. But uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.